Hi, everyone. This is Matthew Jenner for Card Runners, and I'm here with Out of Position 3-Bet Pot Flop Play Part 3, where we're going to be analyzing cutoff versus button situations. So today we're doing cutoff versus button play. Cutoff open versus button 3-bets is probably the most common spot to play a 3-bet pot out of position other than blind play. This used to be especially popular a couple years ago, but people have since learned that you really need to be three betting aggressively out of the blinds. So people don't recommend three bet as aggressively in the button against a cutoff open as they used to, but it's still very common where you open the cutoff and you face a three bet. Here, we'll probably four bet most of our strong but vulnerable hands preflop, such as kings and jacks and ace king, as well as the appropriate amount of bluffs. In other words, we'll likely four bet a polarized range. So before we design our cutoff flatting range against a button three bet, which I'll talk about in just a minute, just know we're going to be four betting a very polarized range. That shouldn't really be that surprising. If our opponent three bets us, we want to four bet them with the really good and vulnerable hands like kings to jacks and ace king, as well as some bluffs. It is important to remember that preflop ranges are constantly tweaked after doing post-flop analysis. I'm going to start with what I think is a reasonable out of position three bet calling range, but feel free to pick something different. I don't know the correct answer here. No one does, but theory can be used to estimate what the correct ranges are. In other words, we can we use theory to get a general idea for what can be correct preflop. Then we take a trial and error approach and tweak the preflop ranges. I'll briefly discuss. I'll briefly describe the ranges. Then we'll jump in. I'll probably recommend a few tweaks after making a couple of videos on this topic. All right. So starting off, this is the range that I'm going to be using as the button three bet versus a cutoff open. It's eight and a half percent, which seems reasonable. And if you'll notice, the value components sort of the queens or sorry, the jacks to aces, the ace queen suited and the ace king. And then we have just a bunch of, you know, reasonable bluff type hands. So in theory, you're not always probably going to three bet ace king preflop or three bet aces preflop. And you're not only going to randomize with these types of bluffs, but it is going to give us a general idea of what the button three betting range looks like. And the actual theoretically correct ranges would use tons of, you know, fractions of certain combos and stuff like that, which we, of course, can't know the answer to and isn't even worth going into. So just be aware that we have an 8.5% button 3-betting range. And if you prefer to 3-bet bluff some other hands rather than these, that's fine. Some people might want to call with a king-jack off, queen-jack off. Others might even want to just 3-bet the ace-10 off if they don't flat it. It's not going to be a big deal. The one thing you really want to take note of is when our opponent 3-bets us from the button and we call on the cutoff, all these hands that he's bluffing with, they're pretty good hands. Like, you know, queen jack off, king jack off, ace three suited, eight six suited. All those hands can flop reasonably well. So we're going to have to defend quite aggressively in the cutoff when we face a three bet from the button because he has pretty good bluff randomizers and the advantage of position. So here is the cutoff opening range that I have. So 24%, which seems reasonable. You can make it a little bit more aggro if you wanted, not a big deal. But this is what we have as the cutoff opening range. And then I think what you're usually going to want to do is you're going to want to four bet around 5% of the time. So we can say, let's, so we start off with 23.7%. Let's say we four bet this stuff right here. Well, we can keep the tens. So we want to maybe go down to like 19% or something like that. So maybe we three bet bluff some, you know, some suited aces, which aren't going to call something like that. It, it's not a, it's not a big deal. So just know you're going to have some four betting range of around 5%, give or take, it could be even a little bit tighter than that. And then I just took out some suited aces, suited kings. You're going to want to, you know, th four bet bluff with the hands that you're not calling with that you think is the best. Suited aces, suited kings have a lot of equity and good removal effect. Another option other than suited aces or suited kings would be to bluff with some of this kind of stuff if we're not calling. Again, it's not hugely important. Now, in addition to us four betting ourselves, remember the blinds are going to four bet cold sometimes. So they're also going to help us defend against the buttons three bet. And once again, just to make it abundantly clear, the hands that I marked, I'm not saying those are the theoretically correct four bets. Again, you would use a whole bunch of different hands. I was just clicking stuff to show you hands that are reasonable to four bet bluff. Ace 10 off and stuff works fine too. All right. So we're going to four bet, let's say four and a half or 5% of the time out of the 24 or 25% of the time we open. And now we need to develop the calling range. So I would start with cold calling aces because aces aren't really vulnerable to any of the hands the opponent's three bet bluffing in the button usually. So you know, aces can get outdrawn on the flop usually by like pocket pairs. The opponent's just not all that likely to three bet bluff a pocket pair. And if the board does come a board which adds a lot of coordination, we might be check raising all in or the flop on the flop or on the turn before our opponent can really outdraw us with his pseudo connectors or pseudo gappers cheaply. So just be aware that aces usually make a very good slow playing hand because if we have aces, our opponent's going to be probably a little bit more likely to be bluffing because we have a good removal effect. 
But in addition to that, aces just aren't that vulnerable to being outdrawn on the flop. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start clicking stuff, the stuff that I want to keep. So let's start off with going something like, let's see how something like this looks to begin with. So I, I'm getting rid of the pseudo connectors. We might end up calling with a few of them. But I, let's start with clicking something like this and seeing how many hand combos that is. So if we call 8% and we 4-bet like 45 or 5%, we're defending about half of our range. And in addition, the blinds are going to 4-bet sometimes themselves. So rather than to assume 3-bet sizing and do all these calculations, hopefully you've seen enough other videos or read the book that I wrote, and you know sort of how to do this calculation to figure out exactly how much money the button's paying to see a flop. So you can tweak this range to make it tighter or looser as you see fit. I'm going to make it a little bit wider and just add an ace-nine suited. But for the most part, this looks like a reasonable starting point to start playing around with these types of ranges.